Hi, I'm Chris, and this is Ajax, and today we're going to share with you our new van build. So this video is going to be quite a bit different than the other van build videos that you've seen here on YouTube. Uh, my background is in tiny homes. I've lived in tiny homes for the last 10 years. My first tiny house was the 66 square foot one you see here, and that was off-grid, powered by solar panels. And then uh, I lived in that for two years while I built the big tiny house that you see here, which is 250 square feet. After recovering from my 250 square foot tiny house build, I actually wrote a book. Uh, it's called Tiny House Engineer's Notebook, Off-Grid Power. It's a beginner's guide to off-grid power. It's on Amazon if you're interested in that. So today I'm going to give you an overview of my van builds. Just an overview. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I will do future videos that will show you each of the systems, give you close-ups, pictures, dimensions, that sort of thing. So let's get started. Uh, this is an NV200 van by Nissan. It says a 2019 model. I bought it with about 20,000 miles on it about, for about $20,000. It's a pretty good deal. It's got a 100,000 mile powertrain warranty and it is a very reliable van from what people say. Uh, usually these are used as work vans, cargo vans, that type of thing, but I converted it into a camper. And so here it is, and the Ajax inspecting to make sure that everything's going well. Hi Ajax. So you see we got a custom roof rack that we built, uh, it's bolted into the, the standard mounting holes. See here we've got a light bar, it's a one strip light bar that is actually hiding a pair of solar panels. I have two 100 watt solar panels that are sort of in line with that light bar. There's some more shots of the roof rack. You see we have a fantastic fan, cedar planks, uh, lots of hooks up there to hook on, um, you know, plastic containers, that sort of thing. Stainless steel hardware, some beauty shots of the solar panels with pine needles on them. So there's the fantastic fan. That little uh, dome flips up and the fan turns on to cool off the interior. As we pan back to the front here, you can actually see the detail of the light bar and how it's attached the roof rack. This roof rack is made out of one by one uh, steel tubing painted with truck bed liner. And so a cool feature of this NV200 is that uh, the passenger seat has a really nice table. It's very useful if you're driving, put your breakfast on or whatnot. And it also, in this case, I have the seat flipped around 180 degrees and I'm using it as uh, a seat for my desk. And if you come in here, you'll see I have a desk, a Lexan, quarter inch thick Lexan desk that is attached to the door, folds down, and slides back and forth so that I can uh, adjust. And the seat also slides back and forth so I get yourself comfortable there. Uh, if we actually will pan in here a little bit, you can see how it's held up. It's just a prop rod that holds it up against the door. It's pretty sturdy. I wouldn't sit on it, but it's sturdy enough. We have an office light up above. It's made with uh, LEDs, and uh, you can tap to get three brightness levels and red if you don't want to mess up your eyesight at night or something like that. So that's a pretty nice little light and a little, very nice work, work area inside the van. And the seat is very comfortable when it's flipped around like that. That's a very easy and free mod to make to an NV200. Uh, so this right here is what I call a closet. This is a little com compartment that I made. Uh, it's designed so that it doesn't interfere with the side curtain airbags or anything like that. Uh, there's a metal rod there so I can hang a curtain off of it with magnets. This is what it looks like inside. It's about three cubic feet of storage. It's kind of unconventional, but uh, you can fit clothing and shoes and that sort of thing in there. Right now, I've just got some camping gear in there. And of course, no camper would be complete without a place to store your beer, right? So I have this cooler. Uh, usually these coolers are kind of a pain because they float around and they don't stick. I put magnets in the bottom of this one. You can see it's really held down well. There's four magnets on the floor. I got four magnets screwed to the bottom of the cooler like that. And when you put it on there, it just kind of clunks into position and it doesn't move. And you can kind of kick it around and it's fine. So that, that works really nice. You can see that here's the roof detail. We've got carpet on the cross members. This is just really thin quarter inch pine paneling. Uh, and then on the floor, I've just got some peel and stick tile on a piece of plywood. It's nothing too fancy. Here's the business end of the van. This is the uh, composting toilet. So this little latch holds the cover down. There's a fan in there to suck out any stink. So you've got the toilet paper roll mounted to the lid. Uh, that's just a plastic bag so you can uh, pour sawdust in there and do what you got to do. This is a uh, urine diverting toilet so the liquid waste goes in one way and the uh, solid waste goes the other way. And uh, this has a little gasket seal around the top and when you click it down it is sealed then the fan can do its magic by uh, not allowing any stink to get into the van. works very well. So of course you need a place to sleep and this is what my bed looks like. So right now I've got it moved away from the wall. Um, and I'm putting in, this is the foot, uh, sort of a foot board. 
I'm 5'6", I fit perfectly on this. Uh, it's about two feet wide by six feet long. And that bottom cushion is actually held on with magnets. The whole thing slides right out and that bottom cushion stores underneath along with some of your bedding if you need to. So this is, uh, the cushions are made out of latex foam and a more dense foam. Uses a kind of a canvas material, which is not the greatest upholstery job in the world. Uh, I'm not a seamstress, sorry. So that's the under, that's the container, that's the part underneath where you put the, uh, the cushions if you need to. We've got storage off on the side here. This is using those containers uh, over the wheel wells. You can put socks and underwear and t-shirts and all that kind of stuff there. We've got some cubbies under the side over here that, again, you can store some small things in. They're probably big enough for, like, shoes and that sort of thing. This, uh, this cubby is actually very deep and uh, probably shoes would fit very well in there. And these little covers are held on with magnets as well. So that's what that looks like. Uh, and then, of course, if you're sleeping, you need some way to cover up the windows. And so we've just got some standard carpet material with magnets uh, around the perimeter. And they just kind of hold themselves into place. So that uh, works really, really well. Works surprisingly well, well, actually. This is the other side. You can sort of see how uh, it just kind of holds itself up there. So here you can see the, uh, the little armrest. So this actually folds up into a chair when you're not using it as a bed, if you'd like. That armrest has two knobs that you can unscrew and take the armrest off if you prefer not to have the armrest there when you're sleeping. Um, doesn't bother me, so I tend to keep it in there. And so then, now let's look at the kitchen. There's a lot going on in this kitchen, let me tell you. Uh, we have a sink that is a, it's a boat sink that you can pump that little handle and water comes out. We've got our USB electrical ports here. There's a regular standard 12 volt port. A couple of switches for the fan and for the lights. So there's the pump that pumps water. If there was water in the tank, there's a seven gallon water tank underneath. This is an alcohol stove from a boat. You uh, put denatured alcohol in there and you can cook with it. It actually cooks very, very well. And you can also use it as a small heater, about 5,000 BTUs. So there's a cubby. There's the water fill. You can see the paper towel holder up above it. And uh, so that switcher, that red switch, is actually the disconnect for the inverter. It's a 2,000 watt inverter for the microwave. So here's the microwave. It's going to turn on and... Um, Inside the microwave, I have this tray to hold various things. Right now it's empty, but it uh, can be used to store whatever you like because it can use up that wasted space. And you see here that I'll turn this on, and you see that it works as expected. So the 2,000-watt inverter is uh, it's a Harbor Freight Tools inverter. It's not a great, great inverter, but it works. So all the electronics are behind this silver grill. I have a 100-amp-hour lithium-iron phosphorus battery that I custom built. 2,000-watt inverter, fuses, switches, charge controller, all that is in that tiny little compartment between the microwave and that cubby on the right. Uh, here's another smaller cubby underneath the microwave that stores various things. It's got a nice latch on it. Okay, so I feel like I rushed through that because there's an awful lot to show. Uh, but this video is already eight minutes long, so I really have to stop. I will do future videos where I will cover each of the systems uh, in great detail. I'll take them out and measure them for you and that sort of thing. Uh, leave any comments, suggestions, ideas in the comment section. I'd love to hear them. Uh, thanks for watching.